Welcome back. Before we take a look at the day's business news, let's take a look at the stock indices across the GCC. Preparations for the fourth edition of the annual investment meeting are now in full swing. It will take place from the 8th to the 10th of April this year at the Dubai International Convention and Exhibition Centre. Organised by the UAE Ministry of Economy, the region's first emerging markets foreign direct investment event offers a combination of trade fair and intellectual features for institutional, corporate and individual investors. His Excellency Abdullah Al Saleh, Under Secretary of the UAE Ministry of Economy, Foreign Trade Sector, said that the past three editions of AIM succeeded in putting the spotlight on challenges and opportunities facing investments in the region and globally. And the fourth edition comes at a time when the UAE has moved to the forefront as a key investment destination globally. The IMF had forecast global growth to average 2.9% in 2013. However, much of the pickup in growth is expected to be driven by advanced economies. His Excellency Al Saleh emphasized that the UAE's economy is back on the growth path. In addition is the UAE's Expo 2020 win, which he said will whet the appetite of foreign investors to invest in UAE services sectors in 2014. Noting that for the first time, developing countries absorbed more FDI than developed countries with a 52% share. Our expectation in 2014 to reach 14.4 uh, billion US dollars. Um, uh, that represents 25, uh, 20 percent uh, growth in our uh, FDI from uh, 2013. And that will make UAE one of the top uh, country attracting FDI in the uh, West Asia. Um, re regarding uh, the GCC and the region, uh, UAE is uh, uh, on the top of attracting investment with 48% um, uh, in 2012 attracting uh, FDI uh, comparing with the GCC market. At the same time, we, uh, we organize this uh, uh, platform for all countries to promote themselves to attract investments. UAE is not only attracting investments, but UAE, UAE is also one of the major investors uh, overseas. The fourth annual investments meeting will focus on the theme investment partnerships for sustainable and inclusive growth in frontier and emerging markets. Representatives of 165 countries have been invited to the forum that is expected to attract 10,000 visitors. Organizers added that the last two days of AIM will focus on investment in the agricultural sector, tourism and entertainment industries, and the infrastructure and logistics sectors. It will also include discussions on investments pertaining to Expo 2020, risk management, a panel discussion on investments in China, as well as case studies on best practices of investment in emerging markets. One of the important things that will be launched during the event is basically the investment report for 2013 and um, we are cooperating with Financial Times basically to publish this report during AIM and that would basically give the right numbers and the give the rights, you know, hints about investment in different countries and I think, you know, today the world is open and we are, uh, you know, uh, very close to a lot of regions, uh, you know, uh, a lot of investments is coming in and a lot of uh, countries are looking to attract investment. So I think, you know, uh, the transparency is important in this uh, annual investment meeting and uh, the conference program that basically we have uh, prepared, it's looking into, you know, different regions and uh, uh, one of the region is basically Middle East and uh, Far East as well as Africa as well as, you know, uh, South America. From the first edition, we had around 1,900 investors and we are uh, we are seeing the registration for the conference and for this event exceeding more than 8,000 until now. Uh, in terms of the participating countries, we started with around 30 countries on the first edition that we uh, 
uh, attracted to AIM, this year we are expecting to receive more than 120 countries. In terms of the participating ministers, we grow from eight ministers on the first edition. Our expectation for uh, the 2014 edition, it will be more than, I think, 60 to 70 ministers will be participating. The Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry has opened its third international office in Kurdistan, Iraq, to help facilitate business in the emerging market. The Kurdistan office in the capital, Erbil, also, also will assist Dubai Chamber members in Central Asia, Turkey and other Middle Eastern countries, according to a statement from the Chamber. Dubai Chamber Chairman Abdul Rahman Saif al Ghurair said the Chamber hoped to strengthen economic ties with Kurdistan, an autonomous region of Iraq which was emerging from the Iraqi war with huge economic potential. The Kurdish economy is now one of the fastest growing in the Middle East, with double digit growth, and has numerous companies investing in the state, including from the Gulf region. In October 2013, Dubai developer Ema launched an ambitious 3 billion master community project called Downtown Erbil. Dubai's Emirates Airline and Sharjah based Air Arabia also have recently announced direct flights to Erbil in another indication of the state's growing business environment. Dubai Chamber President and CEO Hamad Boimem said the office also would help members connect to other nearby markets. Erbil is the Dubai Chamber's third international office after Azerbaijan and Ethiopia. Hotels in Dubai saw their occupancy rates rise marginally in December and even as new supply entered the market, the hospitality sector is poised for positive growth in the coming months. Occupancy grew by 1.7% to 80% in December compared to the same time a year ago, according to preliminary data by STR Global, a hotel research firm. The average daily rate was up 7.7% to just over 1 million dirhams, resulting in revenue per available room increasing by 9.7%. 0.5% to 850.550 dirhams. According to local reports, experts in the sector expect occupancy in the UAE to continue on its upward trend throughout the coming months, especially with the onset of the Dubai Shopping Festival. Around 2,950 branded hotel rooms have been added to Dubai's hotel supply in 2013. Some of the hotels that opened last year include Sofitel Dubai The Palm, The Oberoi, Conrad Dubai and Novotel Al Barsha. Meanwhile, in Abu Dhabi, occupancy was up 1% to 84% during November. Average room rates stood at 919 dirhams, representing a 2.3% drop, and revenue per available room declined 0.7% declined to 778 dirhams. The capital added 1,700 new branded hotel rooms last year. And Etihad Airways has announced that it will double its flights between Abu Dhabi and New York City, introducing second daily services from Saturday, March the 1st. The new flights will be complementing the airline's current departure to New York, providing choices of services for Abu Dhabi's business, government expatriate and leisure travellers, while passengers travelling from New York to Abu Dhabi and beyond will now have the option of a late morning flight. Initially, the, U the new flights will be operated by Etihad Airways using two aircraft leased from its strategic partner, India's Jet Airways, and from May 1st, Jet Airways will operate these flights. James Hogan, the president and CEO of Etihad Airways, in a statement, said that New York City is one of the most popular destinations in the carrier's network, adding that the services will provide greater access to New York City for travellers from Abu Dhabi and is further evidence of the importance of Abu Dhabi as a global air transport hub. In addition, Etihad Airways recently announced plans to commence services to two new U.S. destinations, Los Angeles Daily from June and Dallas-Fort Worth three times a week from December. The airline also flies daily between Abu Dhabi and both Washington, D.C. and Chicago. Here's a quick overview of the oil, precious metals and currency markets.
finally in the bulletin, music enthusiasts are in for a treat this weekend as the Sharjah World Music Festival kicked off on Wednesday evening at Al Kazba, attracting top performers and composers from the region and around the world. The four-day Sharjah World Music Festival is the first ever event showcasing global music in the Emirate. Each day of the festival will see different renowned artists from Arab countries perform along with international artists from Colombia, Japan, France and Pakistan as they create a fusion of classical world music. It promises to be an entertaining event as visitors will be treated to the sounds of old, canon, flamenco, sitar and jazz being played in the main theatre as well as the outdoor stages of al -Kazim. The event started with the renowned Iraqi musician and composer Nasser Shama and will feature the Lebanese all-round performer Jahida Wehbi, Kanon player Furat Kaduri and Jordanian Makadi Nahas as they take center stage with other international artists to enthrall the audience. According to the organizers, the event is a reflection of Sharjah's image as a cultural capital. We will have shows in the theater, in the Qasba theater, and will be presented uh, some of the famous Arab musicians. Plus, we will have uh, in the walkway uh, stages where be several, uh, some bands will be performing. Um, uh, also, the kind of uh, shows or the uh, artists that are presenting these shows uh, from Chile, Japan, and also some uh, India as well, and some Arab countries as well. We want to bring something unique to Sharjah. Um, the new kind of shows, um, shows that uh, people can uh, enjoy uh, and uh, celebrate and um, also to uh, uh, present Sharjah as the um, an, uh, hub for activities and major events in the country. Meanwhile, performer and one of the organizers, Furat Kaddouri, stated that the cultural diversity that is found in the UAE makes it an ideal venue to showcase this blend of international music. What we made, my idea is in this festival, it's to mix the cultures. So we do have, you know, Dubai Jazz Festival and in uh, Abu Dhabi, they are all amazing and I attended, I played and I, and I'm an, I have an honor to play in ja Dubai Jazz Festival as well as uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, but my idea was really to mix the culture as we, what we have today, we have the famous old player Nasir Shamma playing with a sitar, this is the real fusion, so I'm playing Kanun with flamenco singer. I'm doing my music with the jazz stuff. This is the idea of Sharjah World Music Festival.